All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Here we go. It's Thursday. It's bike night at work. And yours truly is leading the charge. Leading the charge into what, you might ask? Well, Hertz has uh, launched a uh, ride night series on Thursdays. Uh, for those of you local in the area, you probably already know that we have bike night uh, at OCC, sponsored by Birds Barracuda, uh, every Thursday night. Uh, five weeks ago, well, this is the fifth week. Five weeks ago, we launched a, uh, or four, uh, whatever, you guys figured it out. We launched a ride night series where prior to the official start of bike night, uh, you can come up there. Reg registration starts at 5 p.m. You register for uh, the ride. It's about an hour long. Uh, we ride somewhere 25, 30 minutes pick up other riders that want to meet at the uh, halfway point for whatever reason, and then ride back down to OCC to participate in the bike night festivity. One of the cool things about it is that we have different ride leaders every week. So far, uh, it has been uh, four or all, maybe even all five Burt's employees. I'm pretty sure anybody can volunteer to be a ride leader for the night. I'm not 100% how that works. You can reach out to uh, reach out to Burt's on the Facebook page. Ask that question. I don't know. Now you might say, Mike, don't you work there? Shouldn't you know every answer to every question that I have? Nope. Hey, it's not supposed to be rainy today, but uh, we'll see what happens. F Mike. This thing is bound and determined. It is absolutely determined to get rained on. I can't, I can't ride it without some kind of rain happening, even when the radar is absolutely clear. Just my luck. Uh, speaking of this bike, the Night Train, uh, the Night Train giveaway is still going on. It's going on through September 30th, drawing to be held October 6th. Uh, last week, we put the banner on at Bike Night for the first time. Had some pretty good success with that. Only did it the one night last week. It looks like we're only going to do it the one night this week. Uh, because I didn't go to bike night last night, I was mowing the grass, or two nights ago, I wasn't mowing the grass. I have no idea what the hell I was doing. Oh, we're going to get rained on. Son of a bitch. There's one spot of rain in the entire Tampa Bay area. And guess what, boys and girls? We found it. God. Well, well, what do you do? If you're not riding in the rain in Florida, you're not riding, I guess. That's the, that's the philosophy that we're going with in the entire way. And it looks like for the foreseeable future, we're going to be riding through this. Not only do I have this long stretch here, but I also have to turn on the uh, Bayside Bridge, which also is being dumped on. So good news for the rain, it wins. Bad news for me, I'm going to be wet as f by the time I get to work. Other potentially bad news for me is we might roast the GoPro. Hey, but uh, one good piece of news, if you can find a silver lining, they say every cloud has a silver lining. I'm looking up there, I don't see it. The one good piece of news is that uh, since I hit this little rain cell, the, the temperature has dropped significantly, so I don't feel like a roasted pork sandwich. Anyway, let's get on down to Burt's. Uh, and just like that, what was my commute? Two minutes? You guys got to see the fastest commute in the history of Uncle Bogator. Uh, we did make it through the rain, uh, mostly unscathed. I'm going to have to wipe down the bike to make it look presentable. I wonder what we got going on at Burt's today. I mean, it's bike night, but... Uh, during the day. What are we doing today? Somebody come buy a bike. July has been kind of slow for me. Come make it fast, baby. What do we have? Oh, let's do it to it. Oh, I'm going to park in between those guys. Ah, I said these guys block the sidewalk to get in there. Get your god trucks out of here, man. It's a Harley Davidson dealership. Truck night was last night, fools. All right, let's unpack my bags, Santa's sleigh full of goodies, and get in there and go to work. We can sweat all day and end to the night. Uh, today's supposed to be partly cloudy. We found the cloudy part. It's right there. Hey, look, it's a not cloudy part. Over here, not cloudy. Over here, cloudy. Partly cloudy is indeed correct. Hey, let it be known. You want to buy a motorcycle of birds? You don't want a Harley Davidson? Boom, right there. That's all you, baby. We sell every damn thing that you could possibly want here if we've taken it in on trade there is a good chance we're going to try to sell it i've taken tacomas in on trade sea dues in on trade minivans cars first said he took a piece of land in on trade one time that'd be kind of cool to see yeah typical typical thursday not really a whole lot going on compounded by the fact that it's partly cloudy and uh we're in for who knows what kind of a day uh, in the sales front uh, but at least for now, 
I can walk around this camera without being bombarded. Hey, cool thing about this ride, man, it is gonna be one of the bigger ones, I know that. Uh, we've got about 30 minutes till kick stands up, and already, take a look at this. Now we'll get some more before everybody, uh, before kick stands up. I know we'll have some more, so it's already shaping up to be damn good. Got a nice little variety of motorcycles. I mean, obviously I've got the uh, night train up front. I've got one of OCC's choppers. It's gonna be ridden by one of the guys. Uh, I'm pointing somewhere over there. We've got Hondas, we've got Indian. We've got all kinds of stuff out here. I love it. Everybody's coming out here just to support the cause, just to ride with people, you know what I mean? We'll talk a little bit more about that on the route, but I'm excited. So my man comes up here and buys his first Harley Davidson a couple weeks ago, and he shows up to this ride on his Indian. Damn shame, man. I'm just playing. He's one of the good reasons that we have a little bit of diversity here. I got two Indians that I've counted so far and two Hondas. The rest, Harley Davidson, baby talking about okay so you've seen all the bikes and again we still have like 20 25 minutes before this thing is kick stands up check this out now we've got some people next door getting uh food and drinks but uh this is a really good turnout i'm, I'm really happy with this i want you guys to look at this look at this beauty this line of motorcycles waiting to trounce through pinellas county florida baby good let's do it all right we go, baby. Oh man, you guys uh, been around a while. You know that uh, uh, I'm not really the biggest fan of uh, leading packs, especially one that's uh, this deep. You got 50, 60 motorcycles. Uh, that's a lot of people to be responsible for. But you know what? They're in capable hands. They're in the hands of the Swamp Father, the Swamp King. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not that conceited. Uh, but it does kind of feel empowering a little bit being uh, being in front of all these motorcycles. I really hope we don't get separated because there's a lot of traffic lights, traffic rules between here and where we're going. The park is pretty neat that we're going to. It's called uh, Philippi or Felipe or Philip Park. Not really 100% sure. The person that it was named after was the very first person, uh, a European settler in Pinellas County. It's got the oldest Indian mound right on uh, right on premises there. The guy's buried there that the park was named after. He, this guy apparently introduced grapefruits to North America by way of uh, Pinellas County. What a thing to be known for, man. I love grapefruits. That's hilarious. Yeah, man, I gotta say, I'm kind of honored they reached out asked me you know even though yeah, i do the whole youtube thing and whatnot but i'm still one of the new guys around the shop you know what i mean i've been there less than six months there's a lot of old bases there i mean not old bases like well there are some of those too but you know what i mean and uh you know so early in the stage of this thing being asked to lead this ride that's pretty cool now you know they said hey come up with a destination i didn't have uh, any idea where to go. So I had to, uh, I had to do some Googling and, you know, route making to kind of figure out, you know, what was going to be the best. And I came up with this part. And I actually, uh, I was at this part. I'm not going to link the video. I don't, I don't like to encourage people to click off the current video, but, uh, back in May of 2021, I did the distinguished gentleman's ride on the, uh, Royal Enfield. And we actually came up Bayside bridge and, uh, Ended up over at this Philippi, Felipe, whatever part. So I'm kind of familiar with it. Not intimately familiar with it, but kind of. I've been here before, I guess. I don't know what the speed limit is here. They asked me to keep it maximum of five over. Uh, that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, we're about seven over. Sue me. Uh, we get to go over the Bayside Bridge, though. I tried to make it. So on the way up there is kind of a straight shot north. And then, you know, a 90 degree turn back east to get where we're going um, on the way back is going to be pretty much all waterfront but you know if you're going to be riding in pinellas county you want to take advantage of any opportunity that you have to ride next to the water because i mean look at this you guys know i love country roads i've mentioned it all the time but you guys also know how much i love this before we moved to florida i watched uh, the entire series Dexter and one of the reasons I started watching it was because it took place in Miami and I wanted to get a feel for it. I wanted to get I wanted to look at Florida even if it was in a fictitious setting so 
you know, they always had images of people driving down bridges wherever they were going to do whatever they were doing. And yeah, so ever since then, man, knowing that I was coming to Florida, it's like, I'm going to take advantage of every bridge I possibly can. And here we are. Ah, we're doing it up, baby. Look at that. Would you look at that? Well, it was nice, man, looking in that mirror and seeing that whole trail of bikes behind us. That shit was pretty badass. Okay, so truth be told, I knew we were coming here, but I had no idea what area we were gonna park in. And I kind of thought to myself, self, uh, maybe I should have scouted that beforehand. But you know what? My man Al was here, and I saw him sitting by himself over here on his switchback, and I said, that's where we're going. So thank you for dictating the halfway point in our ride. Had a little bit of everything, a little bit of shade, a little bit of, uh, I was just thanked for uh, parking next to a bath. That was totally my plan the whole time. Total accident. Absolute accident that we did that. Look at this big crew. How about that? We got Road Kings, Road Glides, Hondas, Fat Bobs, Deuces, Low Rider STs, Indians. Hell yeah. Hondas, the Saber. Look at all this. Uh, we did. Oh, he's back there. Let's go say hi to Josh. So I just met this bitch for the first time ever in my life. What's up? What's up? Melissa. That's a flattering term. That's a term of endearment for Colleen. Yeah. No, I could have called her something worse like, hey, sweetheart. Yeah, that's ew. <laughs> ew. ew. Oh. At least she's got all her thumbs. Do you have all your thumbs? All my thumbs. Nice. Uh, if you guys follow Jack, which most of you do, you'll know that he is uh, down a thumb currently. Hey, mine, mine's, mine's, still kind of, mine's still kind of bent, though. Yeah. Hey, mine's kind of bent, too. I ain't talking about my thumb, though. <laughs> to the left. Just when you thought you'd never see it again, there's a PC-800 alive and well. All the time she ain't been riding it, she don't like it over me. You may never see it again. Somebody told this whole group of people there's food over here. That's how we got them all over here, but there's not. So how could I make a video in the proximity of my granddaughter without putting her beautiful shining face? I love that you took me to the park, Grandpa. See, don't ever say I don't do anything for you. Now go get back in the van. Uh, and our time at the park has come to an end. Hey, everybody, good. Let's do it. Uh, the official count after we got to the park, 65. So 40 bikes last week was the biggest. Uh, to increase by over 50% is uh, pretty pretty significant to uh, grow by over 50%. Might even be like uh, 62% if I've got my math right. You guys got sober, Uncle Bogator, so I may be able to do math in my head, although it's probably wrong. If somebody's got a calculator, double check. From uh, 40 to 65, check the math, 62%, 62.5%, something like that. The route back's a little different than the one we came in. This, is gonna, this should be a lot of uh, water side right along the Tampa Bay. We actually had a park ranger come in and tell us we couldn't park the way we were all parked. <laughs> And he's trying to be polite about it. He's like, uh, you guys are good, but... And then whatever he said. So basically, like, oh, you guys are good, but you're not. So <laughs> we told him, hey, we're only going to be here like five, ten minutes. He said, okay, you're fine. But uh, with all those motorcycles, they were quick to come out there to kind of check and see what the hell we were doing. I get it. It can be intimidating. You never know what kind of riffraff is going to be coming through there on Harley Davidson's. Oh, it's slow through here. 25 miles per hour. That's got to be a suggestion, right? Not the law. What I don't want to do is go through here, rattle everybody's houses, and get the police called on us. And have... Actually, no, I do want that. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Let's do that. Uh, we're not going 25, though. That's just uh, that's a little bit too slow. Safety Harbor. What a cute little town nestled over here by the bay. Kind of uppity part of town. You got an uppity stab and grab there. It's more like a slap on the wrist and grab. That's what that one is. Man, all these people, all these uppity people. I hope they stare at us. Yeah. Well, it is right next to the water, like the map suggested. However, our view is impeded by the uh, flora, the flora of the subtropics of the swamp. Lots of mangroves over there. Flora. Flora, duh. Ah, about that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Look at that over there. Holy sh**, man. It don't get no better, man. It don't get no better. Like I said in one of my last videos, man, Florida is the only place on earth where you can see water. So, you know I like it. And roads right next to it, you can't get that anywhere else, man. Nowhere else in the world. This is it. You guys have heard me bitch about uh, the traffic around here. And, 
and being stopped. Yeah. I we I have to stop at every light known to man in the state of Florida. But this time when I have uh, 64 other bikes behind me, not a single, not a single red light, except for the longest one in the history of mankind. And it cut our group in half. So, <laughs> uh, so we decided to wait there before turning in uh, for the rest of the group to come. Uh, we want to make an entrance, so why be a biker unless you have to look cool? I like to look cool, baby. That's a big group coming in. Yeah, see, there we go. See, there's a pile. They're all piling in over there. Gonna let everybody park for bike night and then go uh, park our motorcycles in other spots. There we go. See, they got the idea now. They got the idea now. Look at that. That's amazing. I'm gonna go park my bike somewhere and try to get some of these knuckleheads on film. There we go. Oh, actually, I want to park right there. That's where I'm going to park. Yeah. Oh, baby. Right there. Since you just pulled out and gave that spot up, that's where I'm going. Oh, about that. Look at Everybody's still rolling in. I like it. I like that this turned out so big. I'm like, I'm a huge fan of that. Um, I'm not going to be foolish and say, hey, because I'm here. Uh, not only is that foolish, but it sounds a little pompous. Anyway. See you then. Just like that, we're back. Man, what a big ride. What a great ride. We're going to call this the feel bad for Bogator ride. I'm okay with that. All right, so that's it. That's the video. Uh, I do want to touch on the whole AI thing. Uh, I want to let you guys know. Uh, undoubtedly, some folks have skipped to the end just to see this part of it, and that's fine. Uh, my videos are typically motorcycle related, motoblog related, and this video is coming out about this ride regardless uh, of whatever happened during editing. I've been using DaVinci Resolve Studio uh, for about a year and a half now, and I love the software. I've been watching the updates for 18.5 as it's gone through the beta phases, and finally it was released. I didn't play with the beta. Finally it was released, and I decided to utilize some of the tools that the, uh, that the new update has in it that are AI related. Uh, and I incorporated that into this video and when I got to the end of it I realized just how scary kind of AI is and I know you, you're looking at me and I'm okay boomer I'm Gen X actually you know what is there to be afraid of well AI did the vast majority of the work on this video I added the music soundtracks I added my transitions I corrected some misspellings in the subtitles but AI did all of my video cuts AI did all of the subtitles and the subtitle part is uh, kind of what's what really got me thinking about how weird everything was because not only did it hear what I was saying and put the words on the screen it made inferences like it figured out what I was trying to say it used vernacular instead of sometimes I would say gonna you know and it didn't just say going to it would say gonna you know, it recognized the differences in Philip and Felipe and Philippi and all that stuff. It put all that stuff in there. It knew the curse words. It knew all that stuff. It put it in there for me. And uh, if it's making inferences, if it's being able to guess, you know, what I'm trying to say uh, based on whatever programming, then, you know, what does the future hold for AI? What does that mean? I don't know if you're a conspiracy theorist out there you might be scared to death and put your tinfoil hat on whatever uh, i'm embracing it right now i know a lot of people are worried about what ai does in the future you know based on different science fiction novels or whatever that have come out in the past but my wife and i had the conversation a little bit this morning about things that we've been taught and things that we know know to be true but are they if you question one thing that you know then why not question everything that you know. You know what I mean? Thanks for coming along for this video. We'll see you later.